Hi, everybody. It's Jennifer Filzen, and welcome to Connecting with Jennifer Filzen. As you know, I love people. I love connecting with people. And I have Mary Elizabeth Jackson, who is an author. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to meet you finally. I'm thrilled that you're with us. And everybody who's watching, she's on vacation. God bless her. <laughs> at the beach in Alabama, she's in Tennessee, and she's on vacation, and she's still dedicated to talk to me and us, yes. and uh, we're going to find out all about her, but you know, we before we started, we just started talking about little things that we used to take for granted, and because of COVID and everything, how, how um, I make, I myself, don't want to necessarily take things for granted. So if, if you don't mind, I'd love it if you kind of, we rewind a little bit. You were talking about before COVID, obviously, you went out to wine country in California and you yeah. took the fresh food and you, you enjoyed uh, the presentation of, of everything in California. Can you describe that a little bit? Again, oh yeah, it's just really, it's so beautiful and it's refreshing and, and, and the wineries that we stayed at years ago, I mean, this is prior to having children. So it's like 20 plus years ago and, um, the food, um, there were several gardens that we were able to visit and the food was brought in out of the gardens and everything was fresh and it tastes fresh and everything's a presentation. And it's just such a fun experience to have because you really slow down and you experience that meal and the food and the textures and the smells. And it's amazing, right? Because a lot of times, what do we do? Go through the drive through you know, you inhale your food, you barely taste it, you know, and, and even being a busy mom of three, a lot of times we are eating out of, you know, large times on the way to the ball field or practice, you know, I made dinner, we put it in Tupperware and we're eating it in the car, you know, and it's just to get sustenance in us. But I mean, nobody really even tastes the food. So it's fun to have that experience, especially when you're a creative person, to enjoy other people's creations. There's a lot of heart and soul that goes into when people are chefs and cooks, a lot of heart and soul that goes into that. So like my husband's making lasagna for us right now. And so he's putting all of him, you know, all of his creativity will go into that and then we'll all enjoy it. Right. Oh yeah. He's got his hands up like this. <laughs> so, yeah, so one of our children re requested um, lasagna, you know, while we're at the beach. And, and because we're still kind of in the pandemic COVID-ish thing, we're trying to enjoy ourselves, but not go out into the the herd of, you know, life and, and still be able to have some some sense of normalcy and relaxation away from all the crazy and everyone needs it. You know, so if someone's like, oh, I just need a vacation. Well, all of us do. <laughs> All of it. It's yes. so yeah. it's fun that you bring that up because you're right. Like everyone is just so desperate. Mm -hmm. so like, like you know, it's it's a you know when um when you're watching a, a a game, a football game, and the person accidentally jumps the gun before, and then they get penalized. Right? They're just, like so excited about getting to the other side, trying to score, or like yeah. you know a runner, you know, accidentally like speed. Like we're all like, I feel like. <laughs> wants to start that damn race. I know. Yeah. And, and I can do it. We can, we can do it. We're ready. We're so ready. I don't know. I mean, I even find myself getting out of the car without my mask to go on it, to go into places because I didn't do this for 50 something years before now. So it's, you know what I mean? So you're still not used to it. And I'll, I'll walk in and I'll go, Oh, up, oh, gotta go back to my car, you know? And it's so funny. Cause like, you know, people's trash in their car. <laughs> Used to be like to get takeout. It's like mass that need to be thrown away. <laughs> yeah, you can tell where someone's been, you know. But <laughs> that's the new trash in your car. <laughs> funny. Well, you know, it, it's funny that you mentioned that. You know, I wanted to share my story about like taking things for granted. So, my husband and I, prior to COVID, we own a dance company. We teach <gasps> doing dancing. I love it. I was a dancer for a long time, so I love that. Awesome fellow dancer but here's the Yay. thing it was always the hobby that paid for itself so my marketing agency and keeps a roof over our heads and allows us right. for retirement that kind of thing but the dance business the west coast swing dance company was always the thing that fed the soul right mm -hmm. and it was like well 
looks like we're not doing that. And so we were, we were all so optimistic in the first three months of this. Like, yeah. oh yeah, we'll be back soon. Right. Yeah, little did we know. <laughs> all right. these conventions that we attend and compete at and like all these teaching opportunities around the country, like they've, they've really dried up. And it's like, wow. And now it's so weird, Mary Elizabeth. It's like how abravado I was at the beginning. Like, yeah, we'll be back. Now I'm like, hmm, wait and see. Because um, uh, three weekends ago was the first time we had live music again. And it was our first time getting out on the dance floor. And it was like this inner excitement, like it's Christmas. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I still got to be careful. You know, like, I like, know, I know. It, I'm so happy, but I'm so scared. But like, and it's right. Like, I remember hearing a, a commentator saying, this event will scar a generation. Yes. It's like, wow. And you don't realize the impact of that until you go through it it's kind of like i always wondered why my grandmothers who went through the great depression you know um you know did certain things and it really oh they were they 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 were penny pinchers about everything and yeah yeah and and now i understand even more what right right absolutely absolutely i know and it and there's a lot of things I think so many of us took for granted and, you know, but I, I don't, have you heard, um, Dr. Ming Wang's story? Have you ever listened to his story? He's like, he's kind of a famous eye doctor. He lives where I live locally, but he's known kind of all over the world. You should go listen to his story because, um, where he grew up in China, there was like 10 years the government did not let them go to school. None of them, none of the 20 million children couldn't go to school, um, for like 10 years. And then by the time it was over, it was time for him to go to college. So his parents spent a year getting him ready to go to college. They had to teach him all those years that he missed. And then he went on and like, he's this famous doctor now and he's oh. created, yeah. Like he takes, um, he makes contact lenses out of a uh, placenta you know, from babies after they're born. I mean, they have contracts with people. I, I, I don't know how all that works. Anyways, I know that it, it it heals no, really when you think about it yeah yeah it heals people who are older and people who have eye problems it heals their eyes it's amazing but his story you know i i believe that his story is so inspiring because like we didn't go through something like that where everything is shut down so bad that way but we had our own that we dealt with but we had to keep like I do with my children, you know, what can you control? Where is your power? You know, what can you still do? Like in your bubble here, what do you have power over and how can you be creative right now? And, and to help them keep moving forward. Because I did a, um, a series during that time called Parenting uh, Through the Pandemic, asking different parents. We did it for about six weeks, but asking parents, you know, what worked for them, what didn't work for them. You know, because I, I could see what my own children were struggling with. So I knew that probably all kids were struggling the same way, you know, just hearing from their friends and stuff. Um, but it's amazing how we take those things. We just take everyday stuff for granted. Oh, you know? so, so true. I mean, just just yeah. being on the dance floor. And I was telling my, my dance friends, I'm like, let's remember never to be snobby about the music again. Let's remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember, yes. Let's really remember, like, this is extremely special, right? Right. Normalcy is extremely special. And it's it, very and valuable. Like true Americans, of course, will will blaze over it in, in a matter of months and we'll be on to the next crisis, right? But but for that moment, it's like, okay, all right, we got this. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and I don't know about you, but, like, I've been saving money, like, it's going out of style. Yeah, in the beginning for a long time because we didn't go anywhere. Right. And I was like, I like this. I do. I like saving money. But then also, too, I don't know when the next challenge is going to be. What if we right. revert? And especially we've been we've been in a lot more lockdown. We're, we haven't all gotten our freedom just yet. And we're still right. waiting for 
to right. have 100 percent occupancy in restaurants right oh so, see we're already back to that in nashville we're not so we're still like behind the times but um so we're we're just like being extra extra cautious and i just want to make sure that i personally have a runway to where i can make payroll you know what i mean like i don't like when it first hit it was like ooh, the savings is kind of low let's yeah. fix it. <laughs> yeah. right right <laughs> right so there, oh my gosh i'm so enjoying you thank you for doing this oh, with me. let's get into you and you. talk about your book and you i mean you gosh you've already built out some wonderful things about you and i just i i'm so looking forward to seeing you in person so we can share a cocktail right but, oh, absolutely. Uh, and a fresh tomato off the vine, right? There you go. At least share a plate of lasagna, right? How many lasagna? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. By the way, I do dishes really well. Um, so. <laughs> well, it smells fantastic in our condo right now. So I think he, I don't know if he pulled it out of the oven, but I'm like, oh my word, that smells fantastic. Oh, you know the so. signal. Heed the subject. Yeah. Heat it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what makes you special and unique? Right. You can go anywhere you want with this question. Oh gosh. Oh, you became an author and a podcaster and the whole like if you don't mind, like give us give us the the, the synopsis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, um I don't know about the special part. I do know that there it's funny, I'm writing a chapter for a book right now um that I'm gonna be a collaborator on and in it's about um the journey of, the, of being an entrepreneur, you know, and there's that drive inside you to do something more than what you're doing. So I've been writing poetry for most of my life, but never done anything with it. That's my real love. And um, I had my son who just turned eight very late in life. And so near the end, things got um, pretty difficult and challenging and we didn't know if he was going to be okay if i was going to be okay and through that journey and the um, aftermath of all of that i remember i was sitting there nursing him one day in the in my house and i was sitting in this I, it was just i was immersed in gratitude for being alive for him being alive just this it was a real surreal time and moment and the first book came the whole down. It was a whole download. And I was like, wow. Okay. That is so like, I've loved that. And I will save that for my children someday. Right. <laughs> and it never dawned on me to get it published except for over a period of two years from that time until about two, so that was 2013. So 2015, I kept getting a nudging that I needed to do something with it. Like I, it's like somebody was, poking at me, right? And I just like, fine. I don't know what to do, but fine, you know? <laughs> and so I, I, I spoke to someone who was published because I had no idea what to do. I was just as green as the grass is green. And they introduced me to, who is now one of my co, who is a co-writer with me, they introduced me to Thornton Klein. And we hit it off creatively immediately. And I showed him everything I had written at that time because all of a sudden I was I was writing all this stuff and it was coming out and it was rhyming and it was like I can't stop myself what is happening I don't I don't know what's happening here but everything came out like that and so he looked at perfectly precious foolish as that's the first book and he said I love this manuscript and he said I want to write ten songs for this is that okay and I was like uh yeah so it was like all these little doors started opening it's like once you surrender then your doors open right and there was a teacher at my daughter's school who was an artist and i said hey you know can you kind of do a couple of drawings for me you know <laughs> and so she did it and i was like oh my gosh and he wrote the 10 original songs in in a week and came to my house he was so excited about these songs and i cried when he played them for us because they were so perfect for the book and the word Poolicious, now I get all kinds of comments about this word, but being a children's author and writing from the viewpoint of a child, um, you break the boundaries of words and what's appropriate, what's not 
perfect's not the right word for that, but uh, just breaking those boundaries and going over the edge about silly words and words that don't make sense. And you know what I mean? I love Dr. Seuss. So, and he yeah. did all of that. So the word, when I looked at my son, that's the word I heard was pulicious, this precious baby that came into the world that we thought would be broken and had some issues, but it doesn't matter. He's perfect. The way I look at him and see him, he's actually just perfection laying there. And even there's imperfection, it doesn't matter. I see what's perfect and precious. And so that's where that came from. And like the first book is like, you know, my cheeks are chubby because they're full of mommy's kisses. And, you know, it's that it's just so sweetie. It's for little babies, you know? And, um, so there are 10 songs that go with that book and they are like 10 to 20 seconds. They're very sweet, very calming. And my girls actually recorded the music in Thornton Klein studio. So it's kind of, and my son's on the cover, like it's a caricature drawing of him. So it's like a whole, a whole family's involved, you know? Oh. And so it's very precious. And um, it won the gold maxi literary award about three months after it came out which was a real honor. And um, then the second book came out the end, that end of 2017. And that's more of a toddler book, you know, standing, crawling, you know. Um, and then the third one actually comes out this coming, like not this Tuesday, but uh, the Wednesday, a week from Wednesday, it comes out June 2nd. I'm so excited. So I've been working on that stuff today <laughs> and working on getting ready for that. I'm so excited because it's been a really long journey with that book. And um, each, every book has its story. And this one has, it went up some mountains and came down some mountains. So <laughs> it's ready to go. And we're so thrilled. Um, and in each book, I have a page of I am statements in there because I want to teach children at an early age, empowering statements and tools that they can use to start out early in life and carry with them always. And so in the back of this third book, I've got a whole page in there explaining how I use affirmations and how parents can use them for themselves, how they can use them with their children. I am statements, you are statements. And I mean, it's, it's just kind of the bread and butter to me of the books. Um, you know, I'm, it's very important if we can teach these children tools and words to use when they're having a hard day, somebody doesn't mean to them, they can go in and do that internal work they need to do. They can shut that out and go, okay, I don't, you know, Tommy just said that I'm stinky, smelly, or that I look funny, or, you know, I'm an advocate for special needs and disabilities. So if the child has got any kind of issues or challenges, they can still use that internal talk to stand up for themselves and empower themselves. And it's very important. We've got to teach them young. And it's also cool because words are free. So it's always with you. Like you don't have to go buy a book and, you know, necessarily read them once you know them, be there with you always, you know, or wait for someone to teach you. So that is, that's where the, the that's where the books have come from. And I've got about 10 others written, but you have to wait on an illustrator. You know how that goes. So, you know, those are kind of waiting and they will eventually come out. Um, today we released a press release about the contract we signed with this particular publisher. And it was for these three books and then a middle grade reader that will come out in September called Cheers from Heaven. So I'm very excited about that because that's a, that is an, it's, it's a story about kids who bullied a child, but the children end up going on this journey themselves of um, looking for forgiveness and wanting forgiveness for themselves and teaching their friends how to be better kids, you know, more responsible and kinder and compassionate and more loving toward their friends. So that's what, um, that's what that one's about. And, um, you know, so I like writing from the viewpoint of a kid, of children. I think a child's world is a whole lot more fun than an adult world. <laughs> so, right? You know, yeah. So, there, there's so much to unpack here. I mean, the fact that you are providing inspirational, positive messages for the next generation. That is just my hope. Because, you know, it's, every generation has its pluses and it's minuses of challenges that they face, right? Yes. Um, the young, the younger generations may be digital natives, but there's, you know, 
challenges that go along with that. You know, what is what is truth? What is what is marketing? Um, the TV generation also had to sort that out, but it wasn't as as uh, saturated as it is, you know, um, with yeah. social. So, so you're right. Like, um, and then you know, suicides uh, are up. Uh, hopefully, they will um, climb as as time moves on because there's becoming more awareness. There's more of a conversation about mental health. It's it's really great what you're doing, and that thank you. You know, if I had had your book when I was in elementary school, and you know, the boy teased me for having stringy hair. Well, it's interesting. I get compliments now for having a gorgeous head of hair, but you know, back then, you know, it's okay. Right. So pretty much, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. right. But it's just interesting how you know, things can, it's the conversation about money, the conversation about self-worth. I was just in a conversation today with some business coaches about how do you do personal development with even coaches in an industry? Because sometimes people forget that they're on autopilot and they could step mm -hmm. up by stretching past their comfort zone. Right. They need to change their mindset because maybe they don't feel like they can raise their prices. I know I'm going off in different directions. I know you, you have an affinity for entrepreneurs, but like. No, no, it's it's very true. It, it, it leaks out into all different areas. So, so you're it's, building blocks, the Legos, if you will, of self-awareness and self-worthiness, empowerment, and then the well, also to know they're okay, just however they came into this world, we we are okay because um, I mean, a lot of kids don't feel that way, you know, and they, in in like I had a conversation with um, she's my co-host, but she also is the producer of our show, and this whole conversation today about some things in her childhood, and you know we are so affected by how our parents raise us and what they say to us and the examples they set for us. And, and children start those internal dialogues very early in life. And so if you can gear them with an understanding of finding that internal self-awareness and power, um, you can create a different child. You can create a child who can learn to process what they're going through easier you know, I'm working on a journal also for kids. Um, I don't know when it's going to be ready, but that is something to help kids with processing, even children who are nonverbals, you know, be able to identify. I'm a big fan of zones of regulation, which is great for kids. And it has, you know, you've got four different colors with all the emotions in there. And it teaches a child how to understand, you know, when they're feeling this, this is the zone they're in or color. And if they do this as a tool they can use to get back to being like green. So they're back to being calm again or focused again or happy or whatever it is. So, I mean, th these are incredible tools for children. You know, um, my uh, our little guy we do, you know, we have speech and OT and they use some of this in there with him to help him to self identify what he's experiencing. So he is able to an eight, tell me what he's feeling, you know, like I'm frustrated or I'm angry, you know, buddy, what's going on with you right now? Why are you acting like this? Well, I'm, I'm excited. Okay. Well, let's calm down now and let's just kind of talk about it. So, I mean, even, you know, he is, he's level one autism, sensory processing, language processing. So if he can understand this, you know, and be taught this, then all children can be taught. I know your, your dinner is waiting. Your family is <laughs> My little guy's asking me a question. <laughs> can we see him? Well, is yeah, okay? buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, buddy. Carson, come here for a minute. Miss Jennifer, who I'm talking to, wants to say hi. Can you come say hi? You might not be able to come hear see. me. Have your earplugs Can in. you wave? Yeah, there he is. Hi. Nice to I got, meet you. She says, nice to meet you. I have my earbuds in, so she can't hear. Do you want to see? What? You want to go? Oh, he wants to go to the Lazy River. <laughs> Go for the lazy river. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer's giving a thumbs up. 
Oh, we can't go right now. We're going to have dinner first. But, but, but the dinner's not even ready yet. I think dinner's ready. Just wait on this did, you try, did you call them to find out when they're coming? Okay. okay. Anyways, yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. Thank you. you have so many people that you're serving through So who who do you see that you serve? Okay, hold on. You cut out for a second. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Who who do you serve in your life? It's who? Or you've got the parents. You've got your family. Who who is your target audience? Who are you? Who are you? With what you're doing oh wow that's yeah that's a good question so um the, obviously um it, it's the adults too because they have to buy the books to teach their kiddos or to do that to do those things with them you know i think reading is a really sacred time to have with a child and it's so special and that bond that happens and and helping a child have a love for literacy is so important um I, so I, you know, serving, I would say would be adults as well as children of all ages. And, um, it, it's just, um, these tools and things like that, I believe, and just in helping people to understand what they're going through. And, you know, even as adults understanding that most of us act and react from places in our childhood. You know, that's usually the motivation behind the reactions and actions that we have, right? So if we can become more aware of those things, then we can react differently in our life and know that, okay, so that person is not doing anything to me, but it's bringing up a memory for me. So it's creating those emotions that I'm feeling right now. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with my past, my childhood, whatever. So, okay, now I can take the time and process through that and then let it go and have some peace with it. You know, even if you, even if you can't talk to that person from your past or that situation, like, I mean, what are we gonna do? Call up somebody from sixth grade and say, yeah, you made me feel like crap. You know, it really affected my life and I always thought I had a big nose or weird teeth or horrible hair or funky eyebrows or whatever, you know, we can't do that. But what we can do, is we can write it all down on a piece of paper, we can rip it up and tear it away, throw it away, or we can burn it if you wanna go that route with that little, you know, using that kind of a tool. But we can get it out of here, and we can get out of here, mm. and get it off of our chest and on paper. Mm. So, you know, that's the kind of thing I like to talk to, you know, adults about, and, and even older kids, because we know that children's emotions, middle school, high school, college, whatever, their emotions fluctuate and are so large, you know, sometimes a small situation really feels so big to them. Are you coming to sit with me? What are you eating? Are you eating grapes again? Mm -hmm. He's eating more grapes. Okay. <laughs> yes. I love it. So I, I don't know why. We all have the thing that gets us out of bed every day. Yeah, I can barely hear it, but I would love to hear you. What is it that motivates you? To do? You're doing something in the world, and I would like to hear what is it that motivates you to do all that. Okay, you want to hear what? Say it one more time, because I don't know why it's cutting in now. It, it's getting uh, it's getting noisy in your space, so that's okay. Um, so we all have a why, like, why am I here? Like, what is my purpose? What is my why? What is this? Get out of bed, right? Um, and, and you have so many wonderful things that you're doing. What is the, the thing that's driving you to do all that you do? Mm, that's a really good question. Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes it's an internal drive that's there and I can't really give you an answer for that. I just know this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, it's like, it's, it's just, you know, if you want to call it God or your angels or higher power or your spiritual self or your soul or whatever it is, that's what makes me get up every day and do, do this and want to do this. I love writing. I love being creative. I love teaching. I love educating. I love helping people be more mindful and aware. And so they can, because it helps you grow and it helps you get from where you are to where you want to be. And so every day I wake up with this desire to do this, um, whether it's writing or, um, you know, doing something that has to do with special needs and disability, being an advocate 
you know, and educating um, others and helping parents understand what their rights are for their child in school or helping them to get services for their child or even just understanding some tools and techniques and things that will help their child. You know, um, Carson and I are working on a, um, a YouTube channel where we will review children's books and get his opinion on them. You know, what does he think? How does he feel about it? So he, so other kids can see other things so that other kids can see him and go, Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. So he likes reading. Maybe I should look at a book, you know, and then, but not only that to take, tools and things that are used for children or that children can use and and just talk about the education behind them like why is this good like we started doing this thing with our local library I've teamed up with them and we're making the library sensory friendly we're going to start sensory Saturdays we've got a whole resource area for parents that are looking for help with their any child anything they have that their needs they're looking for about their child or their situation we're trying to have a wide variety of resources available for families and caregivers and um and the first tuesday of every month carson and i go to the library and we're doing a video with the children's librarians that goes out on their facebook page and then different organizations put it out and i put it out you know and it's like uh we've been doing science experiments and that are they're easy for all children to do e even if a child is in a wheelchair um, or they're not able to do anything an adult could do it for them or help them you know so they can have that experience of seeing what does it look like when you take baking soda and add vinegar to it and it explodes and you put food coloring in it it looks like a rainbow exploding you know and we we've, we've made you know all kinds of different kinds of bubbles you know just things that are like that that's really we take in information in nine different ways and so that you know you can i mean that sensory is so important to For feed sure. that sensory part of us so um i think that you know it's that i had somebody help me with becoming an author and getting published and so i have that desire to help others because I know what it feels like to be lost. I also know what it feels like to be a lost parent with a special needs child and not know what to do and feel lonely and desperate and at the end of my rope. And so I know that the more we educate ourselves on whatever challenge our child has, or even we have, the more empowered we are. So I guess that's where the drive comes from, I guess. <laughs> Really? Oh, you're, you're such a delight. Such a delight. Thank you. What advice do you have for the listeners? Wow. Okay, well, first of all, I would say if you want to do something, then you need to do it. Because no, no time is too late. It doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, my doing all this didn't start till I was about 48. So I was not 20 coming, 22, 24 coming out of college. You know, this, uh, this took a long road to get here, you know, and a lot of trials and tribulations and, you know, setbacks and all those things we have in life. So I would say do it. If you want to write something, if you want to create something, if you want to go back to school, if you want to um, get a job doing a certain thing or, you know, totally quit what you're doing and try something new i say you need to do it if it nourishes your soul and your spirit you need to do it and try it. as long as it's legal i have to put that disclaimer in there <laughs> right yeah. oh, you're, you're absolutely right do you see the bass guitar and the drum behind me yes i do so i get to start playing drums at the 30. i wanted to play when i was in my so I had to wait till I was in my 30s and then um, just this year, just two months ago, I got the inspiration to go learn bass guitar. So I'm two months into it and I'm having so much fun. And I'm oh, that's awesome. It's never too late to start something. Like you said, when you like that nudge, like someone was nudging you to, to write yes. that book. There have been events in my life and I'm sure there's more so happy to connect with you because there's so much you have in common. And yeah. Little inspiration, little nudges, and then you're right. Once we start going down, that, open up to where it's like clearly this was meant to be. Surrender. Oh. You you have to surrender to it though. You know, even if you feel like I mean, I thought I was going to keep this for my children. Oh, that's cute. 
I'll just keep it for my kids. I mean, who, who, who wants to read what I write? I'm just, a, I'm just a mom. You know, I put in 10 years of PTO. I've done fundraising, marketing. I've had all these different kinds of jobs and things, you know. And it's like, but you don't know that somebody's going to really be interested. But that's not what God said. God said, no, this is what you have to do. And so I was like, fine. I mean, literally, I said, fine, you know. <laughs> and then once I, I know, I know, okay, I'm fine, I'll do it. And so, you know, then, then once I did, then all these doors began opening and I was like, man, this is about surrender. Like if I never, ever believed in surrendering to something before, I it's laying right out here in front of me. So it's absolutely amazing. And we really do have to be in alignment. You know, I, I, I really do believe in affirmations and I believe in manifesting and I believe in getting into that positive mindset to create what it is that you want in your life. And it's really hard when you're on the other side of that to see that really does work. You just, it's like everything else. You don't just sit there and go, oh, I'm going to be the queen of England. Well, that's not going to happen for any of us, right? So first of all, we have to get more realistic right but it's because it doesn't happen in one day we you have to keep at it just like everything else i mean as a writer you know not everybody's going to be jk rowling or even come close to her but you need to go with a mindset of okay i'm going to put five or ten years into writing because it takes that long to be successful with it you know i mean it yeah so don't go into it for the money unless you have all that money and you're going to put it in there like some of our famous musicians and artists that we have in the world they they spent millions of dollars to get famous yes they did but if you're like the rest of us who can't do that you know you need to be in there for the long haul oh for sure you gotta, you gotta love what you do oh my god yeah that's what i was gonna say Tell us yeah. how to get hold of you. How do we find your books? How do we hear hear your podcast? Tell us all about it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you can find me at www.maryejackson.com. And I have on there, I've got books on there. And then uh, I think there's a link to the CD that goes with the first book. And um, there's, a, there's a link to my shows. And um, there's also a section for like... Um, advocacy stuff. So I think I've got a couple of videos. I've got to go look and make sure what I have on there because I keep adding stuff. But, um, you know, some simple videos on there. Like if you think your child has something going on, you know, if you need to get a diagnosis, what happens after you get a diagnosis, things like that. Um, but all the books can be found on Amazon. I think Barnes and Noble online and just about anywhere that books are sold online. The audiobook version is going to be coming out soon, which I'm excited about. Yes, I'm going to go in the studio and record that in the next two weeks. And um, I'm very excited about that. And uh, then if you go on now, we stream for Writer's Corner Live TV. We stream about four different uh, social media platforms, but we are on Amazon Live right now. Um, every Tuesday, 10.30 to 11 a.m. Central Time. And the, um, so if you go to Amazon, if you put in on Amazon, Amazon Live, um, it'll bring it up to the top and you have to click on it. And then you'll see all the videos for all the different sections. And we're in the media section. And if you were to click on that, it has all the books of all the authors we've ever interviewed as recommendations we've done over 133 interviews so we're super excited about that so we're coming up on our three-year anniversary um and then we have special needs tv and so that's all about the special needs world and interviews and information and that can be found on facebook and um let me think what else i'm trying to think um there's something else i was gonna oh if anyone wants to join the writer's corner live tv show group on Facebook, it is for readers and authors. So authors can go there and they can, you know, they can post if they've got a release coming up or a sale going on, and then all readers can go and find a new author to love. Amazing. So, you really are a master at building community. That's great. Oh, thank you. It's you know it, it's 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 a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of multitasking. Because uh, <laughs> today I was working on, you know, the press release that went out this morning about the four book deal with Tuscany Bay Books that's in California. And I'm so grateful to Jim Christina and I'm grateful to uh, Mickey Mickelson, the Creative Edge, both great gentlemen. 
um, and really hard workers and uh, wonderful to work with. So, oh, that is so cool. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed getting to know and connecting with Mary Elizabeth Jackson. Isn't she amazing? Oh, thank you. We'll, we'll make sure that we share your contact information in the comments, but truly enjoy your vacation. Enjoy oh, your vacation. Don't get too sunny. <laughs> I know. I feel like I'm glowing right now as I'm looking in the camera. Like like a light bulb that was turned on. No, you look fantastic. You look like you look like on vacation, which is exactly how you should. Look. Oh, I should. Yes, absolutely. So I will eat a piece of lasagna for you. And uh, yeah, awesome. And yeah, we need to get together and connect. And um, I can't wait to have you on our show as well. We'll have fun. Thank you so much. This is the isn't this the fun part when you get to meet new people. This is exactly why I love like if somebody has yeah. 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 Be like, guess what? You're gonna be able to talk to people across the people. You know, I know it's amazing. It's amazing because my producer, she's in Cape Town, South Africa. So like we're not even on the same continent. It's so cool. So we're, we are launching the, the new book. It's called Poolicious, Oh, the Wonder of Me. And so it's about the quirkiness of like ages four to eight, you know, um, June 2nd, 12 to 1.30 PM central time on Amazon live. So, you know, I'd love for you to stop by okay. and, um, you know, yes. Yeah. For and, sure. um, yeah, yes. we'll be last night. I was doing a podcast with Dubai next weekend. I'll be doing a, a speed for in Stockholm, Sweden. It's just amazing. Oh, that's amazing. It is. It is so fun to meet people and their backstory and like what drives them. And I know it's so cool. It's so fun. I love it. I love it. Thank yeah. you COVID, for forcing us to do more video conference calls. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Leave yourself to find the good in every situation. You will always Amen. You know, there's always Amen. Amen. But why dwell on that? Let's focus on the good, right? Right. Amen. Amen. Oh, Joy, thank you so very much. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right back at you. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. See you later. <laughs>